Hi guys. Who was? I'm delaying. Are you delaying? I was. Hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm delayed. We have delayed movement happening. Uh, so hey, it's Monday motivation. <laughs> Let's do it. I motivate myself Let's to go. do this. I had to motivate myself today. Uh, we're starting to decorate at the church. Christmas decorating is happening. All our little elves helping out. Hi, Marissa. Um, so, yeah, you guys give us a thumbs up or some hearts or something when you jump on here. And let us know that you're watching. Hi, Kelly. Um, hey, Kelly. Feel, feels like it's the first time you've caught us live. Usually you're able to see us later, but awesome. I'm glad you're with us. Hey, Timothy. It's good to see you. Um, so yeah, give us some hearts as you guys jump on and we're going to talk, we're going to do like a little bit of a recap from what we talked about yesterday, but we're going to like dive a little deeper into exactly mm -hmm. like getting the right picture. What do you envision? What is, what kind of uh, picture is in your mind? Is it a picture of fear and worry? Or is it a picture of faith and the, the vision that God is giving you? So we're going to um, talk about that today. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. You got the floor. Sounds good. So we, <laughs> we've been talking. Um, it was a really good message. It's, it was, we called it Picture the Best. But um, so kind of along the same, the same lines. Yeah, get the picture. Picture the best. Mm -hmm. um, get the picture. Uh, about how your thoughts create pictures. Our mm -hmm. thoughts create pictures um, in our brain. And... Um, and so pictures are, are very important to God. Um, he even says uh, something like in the Old Testament, like, hey, you, I don't want you to have any pictures other than me. He calls them mm -hmm. images. Image. Like, I don't want you to have any other images except me. So it's really the word. It's a, it's a picture resemblance of something. So what, happened, what happens is, is um, people put, have a lot of different pictures in their mind, and it confuses them about who God is. And uh, God wants really us to grab a hold of a the right picture of who He is, mm -hmm. um, and so that that takes effort, it takes determination to find out what kind of pictures we have in our mind, and then to delete the ones that um, are are negative or they're just maybe something that you've grown up with all your life, mm -hmm. but they're not good for you. Um, so I'll show you a picture pretty soon, uh, one that really was made a huge impact on my life. Um, I showed it Sunday, but uh, it's just a powerful picture that I will never forget. Every time I see it, it, it just it just mm -hmm. um, reminds me of how um, how that picture impacted my life. And I even said that I'm here today uh, because of that picture, because mm -hmm. of one picture. Now, some people are in trouble today because of pictures, um, negative pictures, mm. really negative thoughts that they have believed about themselves and mm -hmm. right now still do believe about themselves and have a wrong picture of themselves and they have a wrong picture of God. Mm. And, uh, and so I, I think what, what God, a lot of people have a wrong picture of God, tons of them. And you know? it's, it's, yeah. So we have, there, there's a lot of work to do, but mm. it doesn't take long to put a picture in Damn your it. brain. Um, you just have to, you have to believe it, stare at it long enough and believe it. Right. And, um, that it's the right picture of God. So we know that, that pictures, when you get it, when you look at a picture, it will create an emotion, sad, happy, mm -hmm. laughter. Yeah. Um, and so we were talked about Elijah, how he had this very negative picture um, and uh, caused him to run in fear and really... Even he wanted, he didn't want to live anymore. It's a mm -hmm. powerful story in First Kings 18 and 19, but right. incredible thing happened. He destroyed all of Jezebel's prophets, and, and then um, all of a sudden, one uh, shortly after that, a messenger comes to, to uh, Elijah and says, uh, based, it's a message from Jezebel saying, basically, I'm going to kill you tomorrow. That's what the messenger said. And the Bible says that, it says, as soon as, when Elijah saw that, so that's a very interesting mm -hmm. phrase, when Elijah saw 
well, how, what, do you, what do you see? He wasn't given right. a picture. He the was given came words. And spoke words. Yes, but... the words created a picture in his mind. In his mind. He saw himself terrified run, and, 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 and dying. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, he saw that and he ran for his life. Mm -hmm. So. And isn't that just what fear does? Like, we've talked about anxiety and fear the last couple of videos, teachings that we did. And we talked about how that spirit of fear will give you, will um, speak something into your mind and it will give you the worst case scenario. Yeah. So you picture in your mind, like, the end result of this situation is going to be, you know, X, Y, Z. And it's always the worst case scenario. So it's giving you a negative picture, just like Elijah happened, uh, just like happened to Elijah. Right. So he ran in fear because of the picture that fear was painting in his mind. And this guy was an She's awesome... She's going to kill you. He was powerful. I mean, this guy was like on it. He was mm. he was calling down fire from heaven. I mean, there were so many things happening in Elijah's life. He was this like this incredible leader, but even great leaders let their guard down every once in a while. And all of a sudden, the, if, if the message gets in to... If the message gets in to a person's mind, mm -hmm. it begins to paint a picture. Yeah. And uh, next thing you know... Um, it, it, there could be trouble. In Elijah's case, there was trouble. He ran for his life. God hooked him up. He, he took care of him. But it was really a powerful picture, a powerful uh, truth about mm -hmm. how pictures can mess with us right. or can also be an incredible, powerful right. tool that God can use yes. to transform us. Yeah. So right? you can look at the picture of fear or you can choose to look at a picture of faith. And uh, are you going to talk about David for the picture of faith? What, how David saw? Yeah, yeah. All right, so David, <laughs> David had, David had. Um, Emily reminded me Sunday that David had um, beautiful eyes. Right. And so, so what, tell what, what does that mean, beautiful eyes? Okay, so it says David was beautiful of eyes, like in the original, um, in the original Hebrew, and I felt like that meant that he sees in a beautiful way, like he had eyes that could see the way that God sees, and he sees everything beautiful you know everything um to the pure in heart everything is pure is what the bible says and so david could see the way that god sees and he saw with the eyes of faith he saw things as beautiful and not as fearful or uh negative or things something to dread so that's how he saw looked at yeah. goliath too he didn't see goliath in front of him he saw what god wanted to do and, and this that's is what, what we can do as well yeah this is what david so little david goes in the, goes on the um the, the battlefield and he shows up and he's really completely surprised that people are talking smack against God. Like yeah. he's saying, what are they, like I can't believe that this nine foot giant is talking about God that way and everybody's just sitting around not doing anything. Right. Like he was so surprised. Why was he so surprised? Because he was just, he had such a great picture of God. Like he understood God is yeah. the God of of heaven's armies, plural, that God is the God of the earthly armies mm -hmm. and God is the God of the world. Yeah. Like God is so big. Like, how dare this guy be talking this way? You know, David couldn't believe that Israel, you know, the armies of Israel were letting him do. Right. So it says way. this. So in First Samuel seventy, it says Goliath walked out toward David with his shield bearer, have him sneering in contempt at this ruddy faced boy, and and Goliath said, "Am I a dog?" He roared at David, "That you come at me with a stick!" And he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here, and I'll give you your fl your flesh to the birds and wild animals. Uh, Goliath yelled, and now this is a very key moment in verse forty five. David replied. Mm. Now, when Elijah That's got good. the message that Jezebel's come to get him, uh, Elijah reacted, right? Yes. He reacted in, fear. He in ran. fear. David replied with mm. faith. This is so important good because if you want guys. your Goliath to go down, you can't just stand there. You've got to say something. And so David replies and right. says this, You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, plural. The yes. God of the armies of Israel, whom you defied today, and here, here's his future eyes. Today, it hasn't happened yet. Today, mm -hmm. the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you mm -hmm. and cut your head off. <laughs> and then I'll give you the dead bodies of your men to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there's a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword or spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. Woo! You guys, you can use that as a prayer and a declaration against the enemy in your life. Where is this found? Uh, 1 Samuel, Samuel 17. 17. 
starting with uh, verse 41, okay? You can read that, declare it out loud over the Goliath in your life, and you can speak it and believe it by faith. That Goliath is going down because whatever you're facing is the same as that Goliath that Israel was facing at that time. Yes, and you can say your problem. You can say, I can't believe my, this problem obviously doesn't know God. Like right. my, your problem, once your problem knows God, the problem's over. But the problem is, is that the pro we know the problem yeah. so well that the problem knows us, and 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 so we're we're like Tell we're, your mountain we're about spooning your God. with the problem. <laughs> we're like cuddling you know, up too the problem. With we're your problems. Yes. but just tell the problem how big God is. Yeah. So, so what Dan was saying uh, about that: don't react, but respond. Reply. Reply, but yes. or respond yes. instead of reacting. Um, is a principle in God's kingdom. It's a principle in just life in general. But um, David responded to the enemy with truth. Instead of reacting in fear and running away or quickly trying to figure it out or um, whatever, however we could react. We react out of emotion. Anger, fear, what else? Well, Sadness, whatever. All of we those react. things are not it's God's human. will. Right. Yes, it's it a happens, human response. but it's not God's will. If you, if you are fighting Goliath every day, something's wrong. Yes. In other words, the, the problem is he just God Do wants you to respond different. or reply yes. and so now, head towards Goliath. Right. Find a truth to reply with. <laughs> reply to the enemy and make a declaration. So if you're fearful, now we you're say, God does not give me a spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. So we've talked about this before. Yes. But really, David went on this battlefield with the right picture. He had... He had the right picture of God, and that's what helped him so much. Yeah. So, and he also he and, and he also spoke by faith and said, "Listen, I know that this Goliath is not to be here, and so therefore he's going down." So you know you have to be able to respond or reply to your Goliath, whatever it is, right. with with just faith and really, but just talk about God. Say how great God yeah. is. I mean, t tell God how big He is, mm -hmm. and uh, as you start heading towards your Goliath. Yeah. Look what David did. I mean, he said. My God is a God of the angel armies, and he will rescue his people. He yes. always comes through for us. He has always come through. He has never let us down. He has taken care of us time and time again. He's the God who helped me kill the lion and the bear, and he is the God who is going to help me bring you down, mm -hmm. Goliath. So tell, God, tell your enemy who God is. So, or actually, you're just saying it to yourself, but yeah. Well, really, but it's hard to tell God, tell your problem who God is if you don't know what he looks like. So mm -hmm. we're talking about if you have the right picture of God, of God right? David like just understood God. The one, the biggest thing he knew about God is that God God was love. God yes. loved him. Like he got this. He understood. And we said this before because when he was out in the sheep field, and God was telling David to go protect his sheep by mm -hmm. by fighting a bear and a lion. Yes. He was sending a message to David. If I love those sheep, right. how much more do I love you, David? So he was filled with this, like, oh my goodness, yes. God is with me. Mm. God loves me. He would say that every day. He would say, mm -hmm. God is with me. God is for me. God loves me. And he mm -hmm. would say that over and over again. So he gets in the battlefield, and so it was so surprised that this this giant was talking that way. Like, yeah. don't these people know that mm. God is awesome and that God is loving? Mm -hmm. And so he probably also knew, like, God gives me supernatural strength when I need it. You know, he did. <laughs> How could a young boy kill a lion or a bear with his bare hands like he did? But he did because he had supernatural strength from God for that moment. What, yeah, what David knew is that he was created in the image or picture of God. Yes. In the image of God. Right. Same thing, right? We're talking about pictures. He was made in the very yes. image or likeness or resemblance of yes. God. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't just... So think about this. God wasn't necessarily there... Um, in a physical form, right. but what David was, he he actually um, painted a picture of God in his mind. He had a mental picture of God. That's why the Bible says that God will do more than we can think or imagine. imagine. Think about that. He says what you can think, one version says ask, but really think or imagine. Yeah. In other words, thinking thoughts will create an image an mm -hmm. image will open the door to an imagination. That's how right. it works. Thinking creates an image, and an image opens the door to your imagination. And how much God wants us to imagine. Like, if he does more than we imagine, he must want us to tap into imagining how awesome he is. And, and, and how, and how big he is, how, big how strong he is, how, he is, how much he loves us. 
Yes. Now, th good, we'll segue to that, and I'll let you go, Em, just a moment. But the truth is, is this picture I'm going to show you, this was the picture that was absolutely yeah. critical for me knowing God because I grew up not knowing God, not going to church, not uh, being told about the Lord. So I had, I had either no picture of God or a picture that he was a distant God that didn't really... He was too busy, he didn't care, he, right. he was unreachable. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden I found this picture. My mom had this picture in her bathroom. And, um, and I went in there and I saw it one day and I was like, what is that? And I had to think about it, and, and, but here it is right here, I'll show it to you. I had to think about this picture, it's really cool. And I saw it on the, um, on the, uh, the, the, the wall and I was like, man, okay, what's going on there? I finally figured out that I think that's Jesus. And obviously that dude needed a hug. And then after I was, I was, I, would, I get this in my brain, I would go back, I would go back there to that bathroom. By the way, this is before I knew the Lord, before I gave my heart to him. I go back to that bathroom to look at this picture because it was, it meant so much to me. Like if this is God, then what in the world have I been believing? What kind of picture have I had before? This picture was instrumental getting me to believe that this is God. Let me just say this to you. This is God right here. This is God. Mm -hmm. I know you may have a picture of him having a, a hammer in his hand or a board he's ready to whack you with or a mm -hmm. lightning bolt or this is God right here. This is the core of who he is. God yeah. is love. That's his heart. And that's his heart. Mm -hmm. So if you see this, and, and I'm showing you this because I want you to get this mental picture in your head. If you can start here, I believe you can be very, very successful in anything on the battlefield because you're going to understand that mm -hmm. this right here is God. Yeah. And if you get this picture, mm -hmm. you then can give it to the world. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So get that thing in your head right now. I'm going to pull it away. You can go yeah. online and get it too. It's really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, so uh, what Dan was talking about yesterday was that that picture is probably, you know, was probably prompted by the story of the prodigal son that the prodigal son had a picture in his mind while yes. he uh, was out partying and stuff and he wasn't thinking at all about his father until he was down in the dumps and all of a sudden he got a picture in his mind and he re remembered and realized, my father's really good to the, the yes. servants. Like, he's a good man. He's a uh, loving and kind yeah. and compassionate and generous and he's good to his servants. So the picture the prodigal son got in his mind when he came to his senses was, I could at least go back and be one of my father's servants and I'll be treated Which well. Be because, fantastic. Yeah. So that's the picture that he had in his mind. But as you guys know, the end of the story, the picture that we get in our minds of how the father will be is actually way less than what it, he ends up being towards yes. us. So the father in the prodigal son story did not just welcome him home as a servant and treat him well as a servant, as you know. He got way more than what he was picturing in his mind. A robe, a ring, a robe, and a party. A ring, and he got restored back to his place some in the family. Awesome T-bone steaks. I mean, he yeah. got like the, the I mean. <laughs> he the, got the best. He, he did, he got the best. The best now, of the best. Now, here's, here's an interesting thing. Now, if we're talking about this prodigal son, now check this out. He gets his picture. He comes home. The dad says, man, I'm so happy that you're home. I just, I just want you to know that what's important to me is you're my son. Now, he had two sons. The other son was this, was this performer, and he was like kind of a religious person is what yes, he was. So he right. performed. He tried, to get, he tried to perform for his dad, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, when the, other, when the one son came home and there was a party for him, the other son wouldn't come inside because he thought his dad was he thought that he his dad would only love him because of performance now there's a tale of two two sinners i call them mm -hmm. one a religious person who thinks they must earn god's mm -hmm. favor that's wrong that's not mm -hmm. god and one a son who can just come into god's arms yeah that's the prodigal son mm -hmm. that's who we we all need to be sons and daughters who just simply just come to God. Yeah. Right? With, the with older son had a wrong picture of his father even living with him all yes. his life because the father was like, you could have had a party whenever you wanted. Everything that I have is always yours, yeah. has always been yours. I never uh, required you to perform for it. I never required you to earn um, what is 
yours in the family. Um, and so the very important reason to get a right picture of God and to have that picture of God in front of you when you face any problem, the reason is so we can be that picture to the world. So we want to show who Jesus really is and not who the world thinks he is and not who the religious ones think that he is. We want to show a right picture of who God is. So I'll tell you, before, listen, even even being a Christian and, and being a dad and like trying to figure out how to be a dad to my kids who, you know, my, my role model wasn't quite right. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of stuff that was um, was just dysfunctional, I guess. And so I have learned throughout that there are times when I got frustrated and there are times now when I'm kept, I catch myself I'm like, wait a minute, does God frustrate with me? Mm. When I, if I do something that, that's, that's, that's wrong or whatever, does God just kind of lay the hammer down? No, he no. doesn't. He never does that. So what, what, if I can get the right picture of how God reacts to me, mm-hmm. if I can do that on a regular basis, then mm-hmm. I will react or respond mm-hmm. right in the right way. Yeah. So it's so important that you get the picture inside of you so that you can give, and it'll transform your marriage and your kids when you understand that God loves you. Yeah. When you get this picture right here mm-hmm. for you, if this is the picture you get yeah. for you, mm-hmm. then what'll happen is you and I won't become judgmental. We'll be that for someone. We'll else. be that for someone else. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll be secure in yourself. You'll look, wow, I don't have to. I don't have to earn God's approval. He just loves me flat out. I just need to believe mm-hmm. and come to Him. He's always welcomed me. So, but if you can get this picture in your mind, and then you can start living it. Bat, bat, matter of fact, whatever pictures in your mind is what is how you'll behave. That's yeah. what we know, mm-hmm. because thoughts will produce actions. Yeah. Thoughts or pictures produce actions. Mm-hmm. So you get that picture. God loves you. Yeah. David had that picture. That's mm-hmm. why he would easily defeat a Goliath. You can easily defeat your Goliath when you just simply know that God is not trying to get you to perform yeah. or he's not. he just simply says, come to me, mm-hmm. all you who are weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Come to me. I'm not going to... I'm not going to condemn you. Um, I'm going to welcome you and uh, and restore you. Right. Yeah. So uh, David responded to the enemy instead of reacting. And he responded basically with worship, saying who God was, yeah. talking about who God is to his to himself and to the to his problem, his Goliath in front of him. Um, something that Dan said yesterday in the message, it goes with what we've been teaching you guys for the last couple of weeks. Worry puts you in a position of defeat True. because you see a picture of yourself defeated. And failing. Worry mm-hmm. and fear puts you in that position of defeat and failure. And you, you see yourself, it's like um, practicing failure in advance. Right. <laughs> That's what worry really is. But worship puts you in a position of victory. Yes. It puts you in a position where you're seeing God be victorious in your life. You're seeing God give you the victory over your Goliath. And you're speaking that. So Dan did a teaching on uh, the word meditate. Meditation comes from the Bible, okay? It's not, it didn't originally come from the New Age, whatever. It Meditation's came originally good. from God. It's <laughs> yes. really good. Yes, meditation really means to say something over and over, to think yes. about it and say it over and over. So think, speak, repeat is meditate. So yes. when you think on who God is and you speak it out and you worship him and tell him who he is, tell your problem who God is, and then repeat. Think, speak, repeat yes. over and over you are going to believe it because faith comes by hearing, Yes. hearing by the word or the truth of God. So you will begin to believe that and then you will live it. You will live it. And what you're doing is painting a picture. Yes. You're literally painting a picture. So, so and you're word, literally creating what you're saying. You're really creating it. The, yes. the, um, th- think about it. The God created, the Bible says that he framed, here you go, picture framed the yes. worlds with his words. Mm-hmm. Think about that. It says God framed the world with his words. Yeah. He had thoughts, obviously, first, but he spoke it. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, is that meditate Mm -hmm. means to whisper. It means to speak. And what, it's just kind of like this. Okay, 
like I just say this phrase a lot. Um, God is with me. God is for me. God loves me. Mm. God is with me. God is for me. God loves me. Now, you think that it doesn't have any power, but it has tremendous power because, again, what you're doing is you're saying it, you're thinking it, saying mm. it, and you're literally putting on your brain an image. That's mm -hmm. good. That's yes. good. And, and you're going you're gonna to eventually start believing it. So mm -hmm. meditate means think, speak, repeat. Yes. And David was practice, practicing this at a young age. I know that because mm -hmm. his very first psalm that he wrote was Psalm 1. Right. And I love this because, and I call this a tale of two pictures. <laughs> Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. This is a negative picture, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. There's a, there's a picture of a man walking. Walking. Listening standing. to negative, listening to negative words, yeah. right? Counsel and all of a sudden, of he's ungodly. standing with the negative people, mm -hmm. and next thing you know, he's sitting. Mm. He can't even move, right? He's just sitting down, like right. that's his life. Right. But this is what God says. But verse two. But listen. But the person that meditates, the person that says God loves me. God's with me. Mm. God's for me. The person that says I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. The mm. person says I can do all things through Christ. My God is me. bigger than Come my on. mountain. The, yes, the person that says that kind yes. of stuff. Look at this, verse three. Mm -hmm. He or she shall be like a tree. Mm. Get this picture. Planted by the rivers of water that yes. brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever you do will prosper. Yeah, that's an amazing picture. Woo. All Guys, because all because you meditate. That's worth the worship. Woo! All because you woke up saying God is great, God is good. Oh, <laughs> God is good. We just lost you guys. God we got great. wild there. I mean, we got wild. Yes. Careful. Uh, but God is good. I love it. Like when you say those things, and that's why we're we're very passionate about speaking, about telling people memorize a verse. Like find a verse that is a stone to kill your Goliath. Right. Find a verse that it is a sword that will cut off his head, right? Yeah. Spiritual really head, one. right? Yeah. Because listen, if Goliath is still talking, that just means that, that he hasn't gone down. So go take yeah. him down. But in order to do that, get a picture mm. by meditating. Get a picture by mm. thinking, speaking, and repeating. Yeah. It's going to be weird. You're going you're gonna to be in your car driving. Mm -hmm. You're going to be talking to yourself. People are going to think you're crazy. But you know what you're doing? Mm -hmm. You're painting a picture mm -hmm of God, his goodness, his power, and the fact that his power is so much bigger than your problem. And what's mm -hmm. going to happen is when you put yourself in that place of worship, you're going to see your problem go down, yeah. Goliath go down, or you're going to see God give you a creative idea to fix it or mm -hmm. wisdom, whatever, however, however he does that. But he will, he's going to do it. Yes. Amen. So how will you respond to the threats of the enemy in your life? Uh, whatever worry is saying to you, whatever fear is saying to you, anxiety, whatever uh, depression is saying to you, whatever um, your financial situation is saying to you, how are you going to respond? Do not react in emotion. Do not react out of fear yeah. and uh, trying to figure it out yourself, but respond to the enemy's threats because you have a choice to reply and speak out against Goliath the Goliath in your life and speak out for God, who God is. That's right. And you will, you'll get that right picture of God. And then you guys, you're going to have victory over your enemy, but you are also going to get in your heart exactly who the father really is. Yes. He's a good father. He's good and kind and he, generous and loving is. and caring. He is. And he is big and strong and he never lets you down. And that's, the kind of God that you're going to present to the world. That's the kind of God that you're going to show people uh, around you because there may be a lot of people around you that don't know Jesus yet and you are the only Jesus they, they can see right now. But you've got to have a right picture of who Jesus really is in order to show them uh, that he's not harsh. Oops. He's good and kind and loving. And I love what you just said, Nate, that you are claiming this picture for your mind and Here your heart. Here it is. Here this he is comes. Who God is for Give you. him a hug. <laughs> this is God. Give him a hug. This is our God. I tell you right now, I mean with all my heart, this is the God of Israel. This is the God of the universe. This is Almighty God. This is Jesus. This is who he is. So if you get this in your mind, I'm telling you, it'll transform you. I mean, get it. Like, 
print it out, put it in your room, get this picture, and then give the picture. Give it away. Yeah. Amen. We got to go. Thanks, Abby. I'm so glad that you shared that quote. It was so good. I read it in a book. Um, oh, I'm going to comment later what the book is called because it's a book by Chris Vallotton and he, or Vallotton, that's how you say Vallotton. it. Vallotton. Do you say Vallotton? Yeah, Vallotton. I think it's no, I think it's Valentin. you say tomato or tomato? <laughs> anyway, it's tomato. Chris Valentin at uh, Bethel Reading. Anyways, he has this new book out, and it's uh, about money and finance, like kingdom wealth. And, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, I'll, I'll show you the, um, the title of it pretty soon in the comments. But he um, has a ton of great one-liners, and that was one of them. So, yeah, I'm glad that you shared that awesome. with your youth group. That's cool. Well, and Bradley Adamson on here. Brad man, Adamson. it has been years. Brad fist up. pump. Man, oh man, I've seen you forever, buddy. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I can't see you. You can see me, but. All right, you guys, please like and share yes. this video. Um, we're going to pray for you real quick. Yeah. But uh, we feel like all of these messages are really encouraging and good for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are going through a lot Send of anxiety and worry man. right now around this, uh, the holidays. And these um, messages and teachings can be very encouraging, helpful and, to and somebody. Like I said, this is our ministry. Like even though we're giving a teaching, you can take this and be a messenger. Give it. It's free. I, I get I get free stuff from the Bible all the time, and I give it away. Yes. So just give it away mm -hmm. and help people. Hey, Mary. Yeah. So if you didn't get a chance to watch the whole thing, we're gonna post it, and you can watch it later. But um, but I'm gonna pray. Yeah, you, you, you pray. pray. Okay. You pray for them to get a picture. Rob, want me to pray? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. I don't care. <laughs> Lord, We're I one. pray, just, I guess, just for a moment, mm. close your eyes and just get your imagination yes. going just really quick. Mm. Um, I guess you can see a lot of things. I, I pray that you see the dream and the destiny before you. I pray that you, mm -hmm. that God opens up this vast expanse of destiny and that, and that you wouldn't see your Goliath anymore, but you would see God and you would see God. And I, I would say if your marriage is struggling, that you would see a better marriage. You would see a fulfilling marriage. If your kids are away from God, see them coming back right now mm -hmm. see your your son or your daughter if they're away from the lord coming back to god right now mm -hmm. um if you're struggling financially that's not where god wants you and don't even worry about it even if it's your fault don't worry about it god's arms is open he's going to help you and give you a creative mm -hmm. idea he's going to give you a divine appointment he's going to show you how to get out of that mm -hmm. and um and so get a picture of, of what he wants for you. He wants good. He has a good future and hope not to harm you, but to prosper you, to give you success. That's his will for you. So Lord, I pray for open uh, minds and, and imaginations to have the right picture. And when you get this picture, write it down. Don't forget it. Let that thing be imprinted on your mind because God wants you to see it so that you keep thinking about it and keep being encouraged about what he has for you. So God, I pray that that would happen right now. Mm. Thank you in Jesus' name, mm. amen. Okay, so we'd love to hear what you guys saw yeah. right there. And I got a picture. I think it was for somebody who was watching either now or later. Um, so let me know if it is. But uh, as soon as Dan said, give us a picture of, of the wide open thing that you're doing, I saw um, just this vast ocean opening up in front of you. But then I saw you as this boat right in the middle of the ocean and I feel mm. like you feel that you are lost at sea like you're a little bit like aimless and kind of like drifting like you're, you're not really sure uh, of direction and it feels like there's nobody else around you feel all alone and that um, you don't know what direction to go in but I saw God's hand come and take the boat and just Ooh. like push, push it, it across the ocean and he's going to very quickly get you exactly where you need to go so mm. even though you feel that way right now and it is a vast expanse i mean what god has for you is big but he is going to take um take your life and he is going to very quickly get you to your next de destination god's gonna do it god's gonna do yes. it love you guys have a All great right, love day you guys i'll talk to you soon